A very good morning and welcome to the 2019 season. The first vlog of 2019 from myself and of all places. We could have been at Blackpool Pleasure Beach last weekend, but no. We decided against that. We are here at the wonderful Warwick Castle. Now, it may only, it may look like I'm halfway into spring at the minute. It feels like I'm halfway into spring at the minute. But I'm not, it's February. The weather today is beautiful. We have no plans for today, so we thought, let's make our way to Warwick Castle. There is no change at the minute here, as it is only February. But we're just going to have a look around, have an explore. So, first things first, I'm going to get my ticket to the dungeon. See you in a bit. Okay, so we've got our um, dungeons ticket in a few minutes. It's at quarter two and it's currently just gone half past, so about 10, 15 minutes or so. So that'll be fun. We've already done this dungeon and I was it is one of my favourite dungeons, if I'm honest. So I am very excited about the new edition of the Alton Towers dungeon, one that we haven't actually spoken about on really properly on this channel. We we did a little bit during Scarefest when the um, signs went up. But I am very excited about that. It's um I do like the dungeons as a whole. They are a good attraction. So it's just about my scare level. Um, I don't really do scare attractions as such, so they're all good. They also I have just been in the little shop by the dungeon. So you used to get the dungeon tickets, but you're not going up from there anymore. Strange. But uh, yeah, the courtyard shop, which is there, there, there. Um, yeah, and they have some new pin badges. I have taken a few photos of them. I will put them in. I may also um, take you around to have a look at the new merchandise at some point. We'll also go in the Kingmaker shop down there and the main shop which is up by the exit. I will be purchasing a few pin badges because they are actually really nice. So without further ado I am going to go into the dungeon. I will see you after for my dungeon review. Okay so that was a fairly decent run for the dungeons actually. It was, the actors in there were on point today. They worked well with Considering it's also February half time and there was quite a few kids in there, who did work very well with it. So yeah, very impressed with that. We are now going to have a walk through the Kingmaker. There it is. There. I will work out mirror imaging. There we go. So we're going to walk through the Kingmaker now. Show you a bit of footage of that, if it'll pick it up, because it is fairly dark in there. And also have a look in the Kingmaker shop, which is down at the end of the Kingmaker. You sign for 
Okay, so there was no new merchandise actually in the Kingmaker shop, but we are in the courtyard shop now. And we've got some nice new pin badges. That's got the trebuchet on it. Very nice. Some of these were around last year. Just very nice. Again, the Tudor Rose one was around last year. I actually have that one. The lanyards as well, they are selling. We've got starter sets as well. £3.50 for the pin badges, £12 for the starter set. Obviously, you do get your milling discount on those as well. These ones are the new badges, which I really like. They've really, really gone up in value. So there's one with the actual castle on it. Got a nice funky funky owl one, which is quite cute. Part of the nightclub. Come on, focus. Okay. So we've got nightclub ones. We've got ones with a darker darker logo, which I think must be the new logo twenty nineteen. Got an archery one, very nice. And these ones are my personal favourites. Ready for Wars of the Roses, we've got House of York and the House of Lancaster one. Very nice. I will be making purchase of some of those at some point. Hopefully they're up in the main shop as well but I will be definitely making a purchase today. Very nice. Okay, so we're now part way up the actual castle ruins. And as you can see, it is a glorious day. It could literally be spring. We're on our way up to Guy's Tower, which is there. If we look this way, we've got the entrance and the church, the city of Warwick, look that way. I love Warwick Castle. It's just a beautiful, beautiful setting. So yeah, let's head on up towards Guy's Tower, see the view from up there. Okay, if you didn't know, as part of Warwick Castle, they also do free tours of the castle with the history team. Some of them are inside, some of them will go out into the grounds as well. They have different, different themes to them. I've done quite a few of them. I've done the Stately Splendour. I haven't done the kids tour, obviously, because I'm not a child. I am planning today on doing the Ultimate Castle tour with Ben at 2 o'clock. So, the armor tour as well is very good. So yeah, they're just some nice different tours that you can go on if history is what you are after, which is what I'm after really from from my time at Warwick Castle. Okay, so we are now inside Warwick Castle itself, which is absolutely stunning. I do love this castle as a whole. It's very nice. The state rooms are wonderful and as I've just said, if you do go on some tours they will give you some more in-depth 
knowledge on whatever you're seeing, if that's what you're into. So yeah, this bit through that doorway there is normally where, if you're going to the Halloween or the Christmas events, for example, they do have their events in. So seances normally through these doors here, as is Santa's stories if you come at Christmas. So those kind of things are there. Normally, if you come for those kind of high-profile events, you don't really get to see those rooms as they are in a normal season. So I do suggest if the only times you come to Warwick Castle are either um, Halloween or Christmas, that you come off-season and maybe see the rooms just as they are. They are wonderful rooms. They have also put up a new sign this year, which I've just noticed. I'll show you now. So it's the recommended route around the state rooms. So we advise following the state rooms to your right first. So that's through there. As this will loop you back into the Great Hall. Then head through the archway on the left into the Royal Weekend Party to complete your visit. So that's always a good hint to know if ever you wanted to come to the castle. Okay, so for the winter period this year, at least, the Birds of Prey show has moved down onto the bank where the trebuchet is, instead of it being further up the top. So it's a good job that I didn't want to go and do Conqueror's Fortress and watch it because I don't think I'd be able to see for the trees. So we've got a good view here, and so I'll get you some clips of the Winter Birds of Prey show, which should start in about 10 minutes. As you can see, the jousting arena has been taken down for the winter, as it always is. It will be back for the summer. I'm hoping for the Wars of the Roses live again, which was amazing. And it was confirmed yesterday, that, either yesterday or the day before, that the Dragon Slayer is back at Warwick Castle for the summer evening show this year. I will definitely be coming for that a visit for that. The tickets have gone slightly up in price. I think we've gone up by a five pound or so. But it's still a relatively decent price. So yeah, definitely coming for that at some point this summer. Just got to work it out with some more people. So yeah, as I said, we're just awaiting 
the Bird's Prey Show. Also, a few parts of northern Africa. And if you still struggle to identify the bird, you the red pine. And you all know that bird, aren't you? Very noticeable, the lovely long slender wings. It's that huge tail that gives them away, isn't it? But um, Katie here, beautiful bird, she really is. However, she's very, very vocal. You can hear her squawking away as she eats, can't you? But it won't stop her, she'll carry on. Now, a few visitors I've spoken to, they've often asked me about this noise, and some of them have been a little bit concerned about it, what can I say? They've expressed some concern. And in case any of you guys are worried about the noise, please don't be. It's just because she's still a very, very young bird. Now, because myself, Jane, Paul and Chris, and um, got a few new members of staff as well, we've been seeing them in a little while, when you walk through the bird, you see, they get used to the people that they're around the most. So now we've trained Katie, and she's been flying for you know, quite a bit of time. She knows exactly who we are. More importantly, she knows what we're about. So when Katie comes up to me like this, when she calls to me, she's just asking me to produce a piece of food for her. But the wind plays probably the most important of doing shows here at Warwick Castle. Although we are on a very shallow bank here, we are on a bank, and whenever the wind blows up a hill, it lifts the birds up into the air. So this is why Katie can just ever so gracefully float on rested wings, literally feet up above, a foot above your head. I mean, the wind is so, so important to these birds. And I'm sure that many of you uh, may have seen red kites whilst you've been out on your travels. You can find them all over the country now. You know, not like it was in the 60s and 70s. These birds were very rare. But they've been reintroduced to this uh, capable of. And they're very, very agile birds. So now, I'm just going to start to throw pieces of food up into the air for Katie to catch. And she's going to have to rely on every ounce of skill that she's gathered so far to be able to catch them. I'm not going to make them easy. I am going to make them really, really quite difficult. As you can see, she used her huge tail then to flip upside down and catch the piece of food while she was up down in, upside down in the air as well. But as I say, kites, you know, they really are the best. They're incredible flyers, aren't they? But what's going to catch these pieces of food, this will give you an idea of how a bird like a red kite... Oh, what a dreadful throw that one. <laughs> I wasn't aiming for the crowd, I promise. <laughs> but this will obviously simulate to you how a bird of prey would catch things. Um, they never use their beak, you see, well, unless they're eating bugs and beetles and things like that, which they do uh, quite often as well. But, um, <laughs> that's why I tend to not come under the tree, so she cracks it in from me. I'm trying to keep the piece of the food while I'm just you guys, and I'm going to put it down here. Yeah, yeah, yeah red kites, you know, they are absolutely incredible. <laughs> so when, yeah, back to what I was saying initially, it's going to be confusing me in the UK as well. Um, the one buzzard that you're more than likely going to see is called the common or the Eurasian buzzard. If you're going to see it today, if you've got a bit of warmth, it might be really high up on thermal. He's a spawning ground bird. But through here, he's called the grey eagle buzzard. And I know what you're thinking. If you realise that I'm not going to get it. I'm not overly bothered about Bruce. I can't stand him anyway. <laughs> nah, he's joking. He knows what he's doing. He's been here four years. So he's got quite a bit of playing to fill his roof. And he knows how to fly. Um, and I must pre-warn you, actually. He's not very good at playing low over the tops of people's heads. Which what I actually mean by that is, if you think he's going to crash into you, he probably is. <laughs> so he all times. But these birds, the green ones, are in the of South America. The lead birds are on high-sided mountains, hillsides, steep valleys and gorges. That, that's the home of the grey eagle buzzard. But what Bruce has done now, I can see all the pigeons scattered. We might be able to the back of the river. They all nest on the back side of the castle. And when he flies through, they get a little bit spooked. Yeah, there he is. Look, coming really low through the trees. But when Bruce takes to the sky, you'll see that he's a very, very different shape than the red kind. He's got the long wings. Is he having three? <laughs> 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 
Um, he's got one wing, it's a photo of four foot wings the band that he has, but you'll see on the page. <laughs> Where are you wings? Come on over here, let everyone have a look at you. But his wings, wings are so, so broad, broad and they're very, very, very large, large and they, and they, they cover, cover a large surface area. area. So, so a bird like Bruce really is, he, he can't, can't do, believe me, he, he cannot, cannot do what Katie can do, end off. off. I'm, I'm never, never ever going to throw a piece of food at this bird because it will just be a disaster, believe me. But um, what he needs to do today, he needs to use his brain a little bit and he needs to get right up onto the high side of the mound here. Because the wind is sort of changed now. Earlier on, it was blowing up the hill. Now it's a westerly, so it's hitting this side of the mound. He needs to get up into the pressure to, to feel the benefit of it. Because Bruce, if he keeps doing things like this, really difficult, like working hard, the energy will run out way, way quicker than Katie. Massive, massive bird indeed. So yeah, this is one of our two uh, eagle species. He's huge, isn't he? And the way you find the majority of these birds, when you go into a tree, oh, you don't do well in the tree, you can't the wings <laughs> So yeah, where you can find the white-tailed sea eagle out in the wild is mainly up in the western uh, isles of Scotland. Uh, once upon a time, this was actually, this eagle, you could have found them all over Britain's coastline. They were very, very plentiful. But this is one bird that got made extinct in the UK. The red kite got persecuted to near extinction, but these birds were, were totally gone. In fact, the last one was killed in 1918. It was shot on the Isle of Mull. Ever such a shame. But then, a few <coughs> years went by, and then the, the white-tailed sea eagle was re-released uh, back up onto the western Isles of Scotland. And you might wonder how we got them, but young birds were brought over from Norway and Sweden and then reintroduced onto the Western Isles. And it's probably one of our greatest ever successes for, for conservation, having these birds successfully reintroduced. And they're amazing, isn't it? We've got Britain's largest eagle species uh, back once again. That's how it should be. And then a few birds, um, as I said earlier, Sky here, he's got about a seven foot wingspan and he's not light at all. He's weighed in at just over nine pounds. So he's nine pounds and two ounces. It really doesn't sound a lot when you say it like that, doesn't it? It's about four and a half bags of sugar on the end of your hand. But the first is in mind, Sky is a boy. You want to see the size of the female. The young species of the eagle I'm scared of because they're absolutely huge. Uh, the, the nickname of this bird is called the Flying Barn Door because a female white tailed sea eagle can have a wingspan of over 8 feet and they can weigh in at about a stone. Okay, so we're in the main gift shop now, as you can see. The new pin badges are also in here. This has got a nice new mug. Nice birds of prey on it. Yeah, looks good. I have another wander around. And then ready for the ultimate tour at two o'clock. Okay, so as you can see from there there is no difference really between the courtyard shop and the main exit shop. So we are going to make any purchases that we do in the courtyard shop. I just didn't want to be missing anything and then making two transactions. But we're not. So that's good. I am going to go on to the ultimate castle tour at two o'clock, which is hosted by me and Ben. Ben is the tour guide who last year did my VIP tour around the castle. It was a good hour and a half tour. Just myself and Ben. It was really good. He is very knowledgeable. Highly recommend any tours by him. Any tours by any of the history team actually are really good if you're into your history. They are very, very good. The night training with the kids is currently on. Obviously I don't have a child, so I'm not doing that. So yeah. I'm gonna just chill around for a bit and get get ready for the ultimate tour at two o'clock. See you in a bit. 
Okay, so we've just had a very interesting, very abridged version of the entirety of Warwick Castle's history. All 951 years of it in about half an hour. Really good, really interesting. It's interesting for me as uh, British history is quite up there for me. Yeah, so we're going to call it a day now. We've pretty much done everything that we need to do here. Obviously, because it's February half time. They haven't got the likes of the jousting or other stuff like that that they have towards the summer. So, it's just been a very good day out. So, with the wonderful ooh, backdrop of Warwick, Warwick Castle, I am going to bid you farewell. The next time you will see me, actually, we're going to have two vlogs in fairly quick succession because not tomorrow, the day after, Saturday, we are back for our first um, theme park trip of the 2019 season. We are at the one, the only Blackpool Pleasure Beach, the home of Icon and the home of the big one and other favourite woodies. We are there. We're there all weekend actually, but probably just do uh, Pledge Beach on Saturday. So everyone will be there. We've got loads of people. It'll just be a good day out. So yeah, we'll see you on Saturday. Without further ado, don't forget to smash that like button and that subscribe button right down there. So I've been Alex and I will see you on Saturday.